Good day. This is James Spencer from Spencer Music and Artist Development, located in beautiful uh, Belmont Shore area of Long Beach, California, right on the Pacific Ocean. And uh, I serve uh, specifically LA County, Orange County, Riverside County. And as I am also available at myself as well as my um, assistant coaches are available uh, through Skype lessons as well. And I often get asked, uh, what is an artist developer and why should I consider working with one? Uh, first, an artist developer is a specialist coach in a specific area of the arts. Um, I myself uh, am a coach. Uh, my degrees are in uh, piano performance and voice. So I work as a piano coach, a vocal coach, songwriter coach. Uh, I worked a lot with musical theater. So I do musical theater and acting. And I also work with the aspects of music industry. Okay, so that's, uh, but there's also artist developers uh, for other arts, visual artists, fashion, designers, models, and so forth. And the reason why you would want to work with an artist developer uh, is they are a coach in a specific area that will help you manifest quickly your goals in uh, working in the arts, uh, as well as they know the insides of the industry. So in addition to coaching in a specific area, like voice or piano, they're going to work with the business end of how to succeed, which may include uh, such things as portfolios, uh, web design and uh, online portfolios, it can include uh, recitals, debuts, tours, recordings, um, exhibits of your work, um, preparing you for university auditions and uh, degrees, uh, preparing you uh, for public auditions for playhouses and opera companies, so forth like that. Um, as well as all the legalities of the business, learning about contract law, learning about how to file taxes, learning about if you need a business license or not and why, uh, all of those aspects of the industry. And so that is something I do specifically. And what I'm going to focus on today is a little bit of what we do here at Spencer Music and Artist Development and how we're here to serve you. If you want to make a career in the arts and this is something that you're passionate about, how, uh, why you might want to consider working with us. One thing I will say is a lot of people feel uh, or were told that, oh, I'll just go to college and get a degree and be able to make it in the industry. Alas, many colleges are excellent uh, for the music or arts training, but I will say that the majority of universities and colleges out there nowadays do not teach the first thing in the business of the arts. Um, I know several people with masters in the arts that have not had one class, for example, on uh, marketing, securing an agent, setting up debuts, contract law, so forth. Okay, so let's look at, I'm going to answer a few of the questions I get asked on what I do and um, again, hope this is helpful to you in uh, uh, deciding to possibly work with me, which I would love, or uh, searching for the right artist developer for you. Uh, one thing you want to consider when choosing an artist developer uh, agent is to be able to check their uh, background in uh, specifically their degrees. Um, you want to see, you know, where did they study? How long have they been in the business? Uh, in addition, their industry background uh, checking if they're in music. Do they have albums? Do they have books? Uh, do they have a performance schedule? Um, so forth. Uh, how visible are they in the community? Things like that would be uh, very good to look at. And usually um, that can be done by just searching for um, artist developers. Uh, online or another great way would be to be checking with entertainment bureaus and agents uh, they can uh, and also recording studios places like that are great places to get referrals to a good artist developer in your area 
One thing that I am delighted to be able to do this year for the first time is to hit an international market through uh, offering Skype coaching. And this is great. I hear, I've heard from people, um, you know, I live in a rural area um, in the south, for example, and I, you know, I'm not near a big metropolis. But I want to, you know, I'm planning to maybe, you know, move to California or New York in, a, in the next few years. And how do I break into the business? And, uh, you know, uh, they can do this now. And the really great thing is many of some of the very, very best industry coaches um, that work in, for, like in the industry here in L.A., I mean, some of the best, best vocal coaches, guitar coaches, uh, I know, a lot of amazing people. Uh, one of my best friends is actually Carrie Underwood's guitarist uh, out of Nashville. Uh, for those who are looking, his name is Sean Tubbs, and he, you know, works and offers Skype lessons. There's a lot of great, great people in the industry where you can find a mentor that is not only going to teach you to refine your specific talent, but to learn the industry from the inside out. Okay, so let's get to uh, the second question. Okay, so the second question is, uh, an artist developer can help you to put together a perfect professional looking portfolio uh, uh, for, you know, breaking into the industry. Now, what does that mean? Well, that can mean many things depending on what your area of expertise is. Uh, if you are a, a musician, a pianist, vocalist, uh, it could mean, for example, having resume, a demo, uh, you know, performance of you know variety of your playing or singing, uh, a headshot. Um, it could also mean a if you're a visual artist having an, act, an actual visual portfolio of your paintings or you know media that you draw in uh, for fashion it could be you know modeling photos or uh, you know uh, photos of your new line for the season those kind of things but here's the problem many beginning artists just kind of wing it and they don't necessarily know what the uh, agents in the industry specifically looking for and so they spend all this money all this time and then they do them wrong basically and they get thrown in the trash so it's really important to know you know what how should I market myself uh, for example I'll just give you an example of this okay so um, I work with a lot of vocalists uh, in all different genres so if I'm working with uh, an opera singer who wants to sing with opera companies his headshot is going to look extremely different obviously from a alternative rock artist that I work with you know it makes sense but part of it is learning you know the image like how do I present myself for my market and it's amazing how even you know the way you you film it the way the lighting is on a photo the colors you wear the fonts uh, that you choose on your resume, the type of paper you choose, all of that affects your chances of making it. And that's the unfortunate thing is a lot of people don't know that and then they wonder why they keep, usually what happens with a lot of people is they go to a few agents and they don't get uh, picked up for representation and they say, well, why should I try? And they give up. Okay, and it's just that you don't have the right people that you're working with getting you to master it the correct way, so to speak. So that's where, um, again, working with an artist developer, mastering your portfolio, mastering, um, again, your demos and so forth is going to be so, so important. And that's something that I do here as well as my coaches in um with artist development. Again, I specifically work with the vocalists, uh, songwriters, actors, and musicians, but I also have others that do, you know, the instruments that I do not have expertise in. I have some wonderful guitar uh, teachers in the industry here that work with me. I also have people in fashion, you know, other people that I send out uh, to, you know, to, you know, make your dreams come true, basically. Okay, so, um, again, portfolio is very important, and let's move on to the next aspect of artist development.
Okay, so also your artist developer um, is going to help you to uh, create a perfect visual online presence that is so important nowadays. And that can mean many things. This can mean website design and uh, and marketing, you know, online marketing. Now, um, here at Spencer Music, uh, we offer uh, cost-effective uh, websites uh, that are three times less the price of most web designers. And most web designers uh, can, you know, they're, they're good. The problem is many of them are geared towards business and corporation and not necessarily artists. So a lot of people say, oh, I need a visual presence. They end up spending you know, two to four thousand dollars to get a website, and then the website is not even getting them known because it hasn't been presented right. Okay, so your website is very important and it can make or break you, and that's why working with an artist developer that has the background of what the industry is looking for can help you create the visual presence that's going to sell your music and also speak to who you are as an artist. Um, and all you have to do to believe me on this is to go type in your favorite artists and look at websites and see which ones appeal to you and which ones don't. It's amazing, even with a lot of famous artists, their web presence is maybe not so great while others just seem to always you know get traffic okay so that's very important and knowing um, you know I mean your fonts you know how that's presented is it clear and precise is it easy to read is it busy you know all of that aspect on websites is going to either help or hinder you okay um, in addition uh, to that it could your presence also needs to be uh, visible on social uh, social media you know do you have a, a you know Facebook fan page do you have Twitter do you have a YouTube channel with little video promos for what you do um, do you have an online store to sell your albums or your products um, all of that is part of this. But also, um, a lot of people, too, that might be, let's say, uh, in their 30s or older, maybe didn't grow up with all of the new technological changes. So I see so many um, artists that have been in the business for years that just don't necessarily change with the times. Um, I just recently ran into uh, a very, very close friend who is an incredibly talented singer. And he was like, oh, I just did a CD and I'm going CD that's ancient. You know, I mean, like, you know, really, honestly, you know, who really buys CDs that much anymore with, you know, iTunes and digital streaming and so forth. So I said, well, do you have it on MP3? And he didn't even know what that was. And I'm not putting people like that down. It's just that, you know, we have to stay up on technological advancements and how the industry is always changing and it literally changes from year to year so we can either let it destroy us or we can you know kind of go with the flow so to speak and embrace those changes and that means we have to change and as an artist and that can be uncomfortable for a lot of people but the great news is that if you're open to that you can always make it you know you can always do well if you look at artists that you respect you know I look at people that have been around for you know 30 40 years uh, a good you know someone I know very well is Cher you know I had worked with her and so, and so forth and look how long Cher's been in the business for example you know the since the early 60s and she's still singing she's still selling out engagements and if you look uh, at her and look at her visually and her sound and how she's changed from the 60s to the 70s through all the years she's constantly reinventing herself and I don't care if you're a classical artist um, a fashion designer you know a singer a musician you have to know what does your industry want now and how do I take my talents and adapt to the needs now and that means too as a musician you might be you know recording uh, 
one style of music one year and then the very next year you're doing something totally different. I can't tell you how many times, you know, as an artist myself where the industry just changes. Like I remember one year I was doing, not, like when Glee came out, for example, you know, the television show, great show. But when that came out, I was about doing 90% Broadway theater kids uh, in my work. And then, you know, now it's uh, pop, more, more the pop artists and so forth. And it just, you know, it changes. And that's where you want to be adaptable and also an artist developer can help you with that visual presence online as well as how to become more versatile and versatile online. The more you offer, the more your chances for sustaining a specific uh, level of income. Okay, great. So again, working uh, with an artist developer that has a web background, those kind of things is going to be very, very important. Okay, let's move on to the next. Okay, in my opinion, another important area that an artist developer uh, agent coach can work with you on is networking. And here's the honest truth, including myself when I was starting up, is artists want to create. We don't want to have to think about the business, most of us. Most of us don't like, you know, having to sell ourselves. We just rather just get up and perform and do what we love to do, right? But the truth of the matter is you have to be able to network and to network quickly. And so an artist developer can kind of coach you in, like, you know, how do you um, secure uh, and get in with the right agents? How do you go in for an audition and land the part? If you're going for an interview to perform in a hotel or, or a church, how do you win them over? How do you prepare for that? Um, if you're a model, you know, uh, I, you know I, I'm going to use this as an example. I love... Um, watching America's Top Model and Tyra Banks. Uh, I myself in the 80s did a little modeling. And so one thing that I love about that show is that she is not only teaching the modeling as a coach, but the business of modeling. And that's really smart. So she teaches uh, her, you know, uh, models how to go on what's called a go-see. And a go-see is, you know, how to book the job, so to speak. And that's where your coach is going to work with you on that. Like, you know, what to wear, how to present yourself, all of that, those kind of things are going to be very, very important. So uh, that's one aspect. Um, another aspect is how can you create uh, residual income even if you're out of work or you're trying to get work? And one of the greatest ways is called, um, is by referral, okay? And what that means is um, that, for example, let's say you're a singer and you're booked one night and uh, a call comes in and says, hey, I would like to book you for a wedding and you say, oh, I'm sorry, I already have a gig that night, then you can put in another singer and then you take a 20% commission for giving that person a job, right? So, you know, I know a lot of people that um, do this. They, they talk to, you know, um, other people in their area and they put others in. One thing uh, I tell teachers, including I do this too, is I tell all of my uh, clients that work with me, hey, if you find me a student that I can accept or you know of a great artist that might be perfect for my artist development program and I can take them, I am more than happy to either, either give them a complimentary coaching session or a 20% commission. And it's helping everybody. So that's networking. And part of that is everywhere you go, you must be networking. Um, I mean, you know, uh, perfect example today, um, I was just visiting with a friend for tea, went out to the local tea shop and was sitting there and I heard a lady uh, in back of me said, oh, I got to get my daughter off to uh, the playhouse. And I go, oh, playhouse. Oh, what does your daughter do? Oh, she's an actress. Oh, great. I'm an acting coach. Oh, really? Well, we don't have one. Oh, well, here's my card. 
you know, and uh, interestingly enough, later th uh, this uh, day, she called me. So there you go, a new client. So that's really important is learning that networking of the business and how to put that to work for yourself. Um, and also, especially for those uh, people that want to break into the business but are on limited funds, I hear so often, I can't afford a coach. I can't afford to record an album. I can't afford to fly to L.A. for, you know, a casting call. Well, you know, then you're not going to break into the industry. The trick is that you have to make your money, you see, work for you. And this is also what I teach. Uh, as well as there's other great coaches that teach this. It's like how do you take a percentage of your earnings and put that back into your advertising or your albums? How do you um, leverage the people around you that are in the arts to do things for you? That's another great thing, you know, uh, or give them an incentive to want to be on your team. Uh, and I, those are things I teach, you know. Uh, for example, um, a lot of college kids that are very, very talented um, always need income while they're in school. So um, I have professional singers that are like, well, I need to do a gig. I need a pianist at the last minute. And who do I hire? And I say, hey, here's a whole list of these incredible kids getting their bachelors that are very talented kids. And they'll work, you know, inexpensively because they're not in the industry yet. And so it's helping everybody. You know, part of what I love to teach is that we are all an arts family. And it's if we work together, we help each other, everybody prospers, everybody su succeeds. And a lot of people have the attitude of me, 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 or I got to push someone ahead of me to break in. And those people usually don't last because nobody wants to work with them. <laughs> okay, so, you know, it goes without saying. But anyway, um, that's another great aspect of the artist developer is teaching, you know, someone the networking uh, aspects of uh, your industry. Okay, let's move on. Okay, um, so next, uh, very, very important is that your artist developer is going to work with you on perfecting your image and your packaging of how you present yourself and this can cover many many things um, I'm gonna be very very honest and say that the industry is about looks and about how you present yourself um, uh, you know uh, in specific venues and so you gotta you know really put health care uh, and uh, you know diet exercise all of that uh, as a high priority, um, a lot of people uh, think that, oh, I want to get into the business because I, you know, I want to be a rocker, I want to get the girls, that kind of a thing. And, you know, the party, you know, mentality, so to speak, is not going to work uh, to becoming a uh, professional uh, artist, okay. So your artist developer is going to look at you and what your, you know, like uh, what your forte is, so to speak, and help you market yourself, dress a certain way, present yourself uh, to, uh, you know, be the best you can, okay. So this can include many things. Um, I specifically, as a vocalist and pianist, I work with singers uh, specifically on vocal care, how to take care of their voice, uh, how to condition their voice, what to do if, what to do if they get a cold and you have to go out and perform, what do you do? Uh, you know, how do you prevent nodes on your chords? Um, if you're a pianist and you have to perform on a bad, stiff piano, how do you protect your hands? Uh, you know, those kind of things. If you're, uh, and I'm, you know, like I said, work in a specific area, but maybe if you're a visual artist, there's certain things that you need to do and how you present yourself um, and so forth. So you get the idea. And it's not only about that, it's about, you know, um, the visual packaging is about, well, you know, how does your website, how does your portfolios, how does everything you're doing work as one unit? And uh, it's amazing how 
I see like someone's website and how they're presenting themselves, and then I look at their album and it looks different. Um, I recently, the person will remain nameless, uh, looked at a very famous opera singer's website, and immediately when I saw it, it looked to me like a country western singer's website. And the person is an opera. And I'm like, well, that gave me the wrong impression, you see, right away. And that's going to be confusing. So that's something that your artist developer is going to work with you on. They're going to give you, um, they're going to put you on a regime. You know, like I make all my uh, performers do specific things. Like, you know, my singers have to do yoga. They have to take care of their health. Uh, you know, if my pianists are performing long hours, they have to get massaged, they have to do specific things to keep in top notch, you know, physically fit. If you look at, again, a lot of the artists that are making it in the industry, they keep their bodies toned, they look, they, they study the fashion, they present themselves a certain way, and then that's why they're always getting photographed, they're always in the limelight, okay? So, one thing is if you want to be a star, you got to start thinking and living already as if you are that person you want to be, you know. Um, here's another a little aside, but a friend of mine came to me and says, oh, well, I, you know, I'm not married yet. I'm getting a little older. Um, you know, gosh, I hope I meet the right girl. And I said, well, go buy the wedding ring. And he goes, well, I haven't even met a girl yet. I said, right. You need to be putting yourself out there that you're already in a relationship. You're already the marriage potential and that mindset will start attracting the right woman to them, you see. So it's that kind of mindset that we have to do as that artist developers help motivate you. Artist developer, too, with this whole um, thing concerning, uh, you know, image, uh, it's going to push a few buttons. I had to tell one student that, you know, they were overweight uh, for that specific, you know, for their industry. And that hurt their feelings. But then I did it in a loving way. And then that same person... Uh, just metamorphosized into a star within two years. This person is, I mean, it's night and day, you know. And so we have to go through sort of a, an emotional and physical makeover. And, um, you know, and then also, this could also, we have to be truthful with industry. And what that means, too, is that I'll, I'm going to use an example of this. Um, I have a gentleman who is one of my most talented um, R&B singers, and he is a incredible black artist, but he lives specifically in a more completely white area. And there is some racism. It happens. So it's like I have to kind of explain to him, well, then this is how you downplay a certain aspect to be accepted in that specific um, area, okay? Um, I know that sounds, to a lot of people, extremely racist, but, you know, I'm going to use someone like Diana Ross. Diana Ross kind of softened her look and her sound to appeal to, a, you know, a commercial class of music that incorporated all different people listening to her, right? She broke into the supposedly white market, right? And that was very, very smart. And people that are able to morph into what's needed are the ones that do well. So it's not about, so it's about being true to you, but at the same time, being adaptable. Um, I present myself very different ways depending on what I'm doing. If I am performing a Mozart concerto with orchestra, obviously I'm presenting myself in a tux and very distinguished in a very different way than if I'm just working at home or if I'm playing jazz, you know, or if I'm doing musical theater, or if I'm talking as a college professor, all of those are different roles. So I present myself for what that role requires, okay? And that's something that you're going to want to be able to do as well, okay? And that's where your developer can help you, okay? Let's move on. Okay, artist developers, most important thing they do is they will help you get work. Okay, so what does this mean and how, what could this be? Um, first, um, debuts. Uh, 
is a very important thing. A debut is a recital or a performance that sort of introduces you to uh, the, you know, the city you live in, the industry you're in. And uh, usually a good artist developer can help you secure the right venue. Uh, for example, if you're a, um, a classical performer, you know, giving a recital somewhere. You know, uh, if you are a pop rock band, a rapper, something like that is getting the right venue to start getting out there and getting known. Uh, if you are an artist, it might be uh, finding the right place to exhibit your work or a gallery showing. Uh, if you're a fashion designer, you know, getting some form of a runway show or a mall that has different uh, fashion boutiques to maybe allow you to display your clothes, those kind of things. Okay, so that's very important. In addition, it's not just the what we call the you know, the uh, intro, uh, your introduction out, but also things after that. So this could be um, doing a tour. Uh, this could be, uh, if you're performers, working on a cruise ship, getting into a run of a show where you're, you know, doing a Broadway show or a, a show on tour for several months. Uh, it could be performing in a resort. It could be so many different things just depending on what your needs are, you know. But basically let those um, artist developers, you know, kind of guide you into strategically where you need to be to get where you want to go. Uh, an example, I have a student right now that wants to relocate to London and is a very talented singer. And yet, uh, he's new, even though he's a talented singer, he's sort of new to aspects of the business. And so I said, well, we need to do this in steps. You're not ready to just up and move to London. You know, you need a little bit more experience first. So in addition to getting him in with other agents and local engagements, we're working on some smaller projects, so to speak. And then as that builds up, then, you know, maybe a U.S. tour, then London, you know, um, or for example, I have uh, another, I have a Broadway singer who wants to work the cruise ships, and I say, well, start local here out of LA doing a three-day cruise to Mexico and get used to being on a cruise ship before you audition to go to Europe and having to sign a six-month contract and be out of the country in a whole new environment that you're not used to. You know, so um, a lot of it is sort of what we call taking the baby steps. And that's where um, you can also, with your artist developer, test the waters and revamp uh, what's needed. For example, I know so many artists that are very talented, but maybe they suffer from stage fright. And it's like, how do you desensitize yourself from that and do it easily and effortlessly without a lot of stress? And one way is by maybe starting with smaller venues and building to bigger venues. I myself, um, you know, didn't really ever have fear until I started to do the really big venues. And I went from playing, you know, a couple of symphony engagements and things to like, oh my God, I'm doing Hollywood Bowl now. And I was terrified, right? It was a big jump for me, you know. And I wish at that time I would have had a coach that could have helped me with strategies, uh, with dealing with the stress of that, you know, and um, you know, I got through it, but I had a burnout, and that can happen with a lot of artists too. So it's also kind of learning, you know, how you, um, you know, relate to your market. Some people are more introverted, uh, some people are more extroverted. Um, I personally, right now, I'm working with an incredibly talented fashion designer. Uh, by the way, her website, uh, which I designed, is at Fashion Bertrand, B-E-R-T-R-A-N-D, dot com. And uh, this artist, very, very, very talented, tends to be a little bit like me, likes her, you know, likes her privacy and so forth. And she was like, well, how do I break into making a lot of money doing what I love with fashion, but still kind of be a home person because I don't want to be around all that LA society and you know we talked about this as as her artist developer and she is now book solid but she is happy working mostly out of her home and not having to do as much industry you know networking as other people but she's book solid so she did exactly what she wanted so again that's 
another thing an artist developer does is to help you understand yourself too of like you know what is going to be best for for me as an artist i have one person who um cannot stand cold weather but thinks she wants to live in new york and i'm like you know it's not probably the right thing for you if every time you go up to the mountains you're getting cold and you don't like cold weather but you want to move to new york probably not the best place and i said she's just not old enough yet to have explored other options and that's where um an artist developer can also tell you, you know, kind of what area should you be in for what you do and how do you make that happen and so forth. Okay, so uh, another great um, aspect of what artist developers like myself and the others out there in the industry do. Okay, let's move on. Okay, one of the greatest things that I myself am able to offer now, which I am so, so, so delighted about, is, um, let's face it, education is getting ridiculously expensive, right? You know, and a lot of people want a degree in the arts, but, you know, who the heck now wants to spend thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars? And, uh, you know, it's difficult. And I know so many people that, you know, want, you know, you know, go into $100,000 worth of debt to get a degree. Here's the thing. Here's the honest truth of it, people. I want you to really listen up, okay? I'm going to tell you like it is, okay? Unless you want to teach in, a, in the university or high school system, you do not need a degree from a university specifically in the, in the arts, Okay, so meaning if you if you say I want to be like let's say you live in California, you say I want to be a university professor. Absolutely, you need to go through the the you know the the university system. Or if you want to teach in a public high school or elementary school, let's face it, um, there's no more jobs. You know, let's just face it. There's so much um, you know um, you know like I said, the the world's changing. There's so many layoffs. Things are going to a whole new way of doing things, which is online teaching and so forth. But here's the good thing. The good thing now is there's other ways to get degrees without spending tons of money. I myself am a U.S. representative professor for London College of Music. And what London College of Music offers is we offer eight grades in, um, uh, first of all, eight grades in performance. Uh, be it whatever you do, piano, voice, uh, they, they offer it for acting, as well as for music theory and so forth. After grade eight are actual internationally recognized degrees. Uh, one is, there's what's called affiliate, which is sort of like a bachelor's, licentiate, close to a master's, and fellowship close to a doctorate, okay? So even though they are slightly different than the U.S. degrees, um, the great thing is by studying with a private coach, you can do these degrees through study and performance submission or going to a U.S. test center and doing the proper performance recital and papers and so forth to get the degree. At literally, sometimes even 10 times less the cost of going to a university, okay? Um, and this is wonderful because this is how you can get that uh, accreditation backing behind what you do without the, the, you know, tons of money into universities, okay? So for those that are interested, uh, feel free to visit my website or feel free to give me a jingle. I'll leave my phone number at the end of this uh, video uh, to learn about the London College music exams uh, and studying with a coach artist developer like myself and how to secure degrees. All that, of course, is up on their website, too. So all you have to do is go to the Internet, type in London College Music Exams. You will find information. You can check uh, what the, the requirements are for the specific areas. You need to be with, though, studying with a London representative coach. Uh, for a list of those coaches, uh, you can, of course, uh, contact uh, London College of Music. There are coaches throughout the U.S., uh, throughout the whole world. Uh, I myself, though, do work specifically with vocalists uh, and actors via Skype as well. But um, I do believe, specifically, if you are pursuing a degree, you really should be working one-on-one -on -one with a coach in person. And um, you can always, if you 
do not live in California and you're looking for someone, uh, feel free to call me and I will try to, my best to help you find a coach in your area. Um, this is an amazing new way of doing things and um, fabulous. I have right now studying with me a 15-year-old boy who already has completed uh, grade 8 of the performance grades and that is considered first year college level and he's 15. He will have his music degree before he even graduates high school. How cool is that? So it's a really great thing. But here's the other thing. For those who are choosing college, okay, another thing would be to work with an artist developer coach that has taught in universities like myself in what you need to do to prepare to ace your auditions or to uh, take your entrance exams and it is getting really difficult out there um, even the Cal State systems like my uh, one of my alma maters is Cal State Fullerton and they only allow in now maybe 10 people a year into their Broadway musical theater department so it is very stiff competition and they even now a lot of a lot of schools especially in California require a DVD performance submission before they even ask you to come to audition for them. So it's a pretty lengthy process and the the mistake people make is a lot of high school kids think, oh, I'll look into college once I finish senior year and, and think they'll just get in right away. And what's happening is you have to start your freshman year of high school preparing. And unfortunately, I feel today a lot of kids um, are not well prepared for college. Um, I also feel, um, unfortunately, many high schools with budget cuts just do not offer um, enough of the arts classes that a student needs to succeed in their college auditions. It's, to me, a tragedy. My high school, which was one of, I, I feel, the best high schools uh, in Orange County for the Arts when I was there that offered over 15 periods of music is down to two periods of music now. And that means those high school seniors are not getting half the education I was fortunate enough to get. Okay, I do not put any high school teacher down. I think, you know, I think that, you know, um, there are incredible um, teachers out there uh, that are phenomenal. It's just because of budget cuts and things, it's harder to get the well-rounded education. Teachers are working against no budgets. Uh, there's lack of money for pianos, for putting on production. So a lot of high schools do not have um, that opportunity anymore. Uh, it's very tragic. But this is where, again, um, studying with a coach uh, for for. London College and things like that could be a really good alternative for those who um, are planning a degree and so forth. Or, like I say, working with a coach to learn the ins and outs so you, you can find which college is going to be best for what your needs are and um, all the secrets besides getting into a college. How do you secure scholarships? How do you secure work programs? How do you find inexpensive living? All of those things can be um, can be helped. Unfortunately, too, another thing I see is that a lot of parents, well-meaning parents of students, um, are not necessarily schooled in the art, so they just don't know where to start either, you know. And uh, again, uh, a good developer, uh, artist developer, hopefully like myself, can also be, you know, sit down with a whole family, parents and child, and really help to map out uh, a great game plan. So it's no financial burden on anyone and everybody's happy basically okay and that's important because you know let's really face it people um, you know if you're gonna spend uh, a lot of people you know spending four to five years to get a bachelor that's a, a lot of money and a lot of time and you want to make sure that you are in the right place for your goals okay and I really really stress that okay great let's move on Okay, and here's uh, another important thing specifically for musicians of all types, songwriters, okay, vocalists, rappers, okay, anybody in the music entertainment, okay, is, you know, uh, people want to make an album, okay, 
And the thing is, is you want to be working with an artist developer in uh, all aspects of that process. Why? Is that most people do not know the first thing of what is commercial and what's going to sell. The average performer writes a bunch of songs, goes into a studio and records them, not thinking necessarily about how are those songs working as a unit, you know, the... Is it commercial? Is it busy? You know, time uh, on the album, you know, packaging, all of that, and they just kind of wing it. And those albums will most likely not do so well, okay? However, those who have a strategy and work, uh, you know, on that, on developing, are going to have a better time of getting international exposure, and that's what your artist developer can do. Also, you don't want to have to spend tons of money. And part of learning what to do is how to do a great album on a shoestring. And that's something that I teach uh, with my clients. Uh, for example, um, you know, my studio where I record is... Um, only 50 or so dollars an hour compared to most studios, 100, 150, 200 an hour, uh, and so forth. Second is knowing uh, what you're recording and the legality of that, meaning a lot of people think, oh, I'll just record whatever pop songs I want to record. However, what a lot of people don't realize is that any song that is written after 1923 is copyrighted and that means you have to pay royalties out to use that song and because of all of the new types of media out there which include many things besides just CDs which is going out there's mp3 albums right you know iTunes that kind of thing there is uh, digital streaming stations like um, Pandora Spotify all those there is um, YouTube videos there is mul all kinds of multimedia and how you're going to be selling and presenting yourself. And guess what? If that's out on the market and you're using someone else's song, it's, it's a lot of royalties. So to give you an idea, um, to, to do um, one track on an album and, get, and secure the royalty rights for one song to sell only a hundred digital downloads on iTunes can cost you fifty sixty dollars so imagine if you have twelve songs or fifteen songs on an album that's like five hundred dollars out of your own pocket to you know basically just sell a hundred downloads so the return on your investment is really bad you're making less than a dollar an album basically however a secret of, of uh, the industry is if you record uh, public domain, that means anything be before 1923, or original material, then either you own the copyright or because it's public domain, you don't have to pay any royalty rights out. So that can be thousands of dollars of savings down the line. So these are kind of things that I teach is, or, you know, is, is, you know, or to strategically, if you are going to do a cover song, what do you put on the album and why? A lot of people think, oh, I'll just sing my favorite song. No, wrong approach. Uh, and then also is how you do your digital video marketing. That album cover, you know, uh, do you use a photo of yourself on their album or within your specific genre, is it better not to and why? You know, all of those things, um, you know, uh, what are called meta tags. Like, you know, when you're online, it, if people search for your album, can they type in something and are you going to pop up? Or are you going to be, you know, just um, kind of uh, hidden in the malls of the Internet, you know, and, and your album doesn't get searched for? Um, another thing that's very important is an age, uh, agent, artist, developer like myself can teach you all the tricks of getting someone to pick up your album for either a radio show or a digital podcast. And what is so great now because of digital radio are there are thousands of phenomenal, phenomenal shows out there that want your music. It's just you have to be able to find them. Um, I myself am a jazz pianist. My last album called Nightfall... Um, actually did very well internationally, but specifically in Australia because I got picked up by a really great 
um, radio podcast called The Cocktail Nation. And that specific show caters to jazz, piano, and lounge music, which is what I, I play. And what was great is I secured um, several interviews for that show, as well as I was played on rotation regularly. Uh, so almost every week, one of my tracks was being played. So that's getting me out there and heard. And I was blessed to be honored to be included in the top 10, you know, cocktail jazz albums of last year for, you know, uh, that specific, you know, area of Australia. And you might find with your albums that you're more popular than where, you know, in a certain area than where you live. I find that my sound personally as a jazz artist tends to be, a, I'm just going to say it, a little bit more sophisticated for average um, American taste. And so my albums tend to do better in areas like New York or in London and the bigger cities just because I play music that's catered to that. See, so what you might find too is in your doing of an album, you might find that you have, you know, as you start putting your stuff out there, that there's a specific market that wants yourself, and then you can do your next album and gear yourself towards that market. So, since, for example, I have developed sort of what I call a cocktail jazz uh, following, I'm going to do a whole series of cocktail piano uh, jazz albums specifically in that genre because that tends to be where my market is for my playing, you see. And it could be the same uh, if you're a rock artist. You might find that you do well on specific streaming stations uh, other better than others. Um, I found that myself. Like, I have some streaming stations that play myself on rotation literally all day long and others where... I'm not played as much, you know. And so that's the part of learning the art, the, the industry that's so important as well that your um, artist developer agent can work with you on. Um, and um, there's more to that. It's like, you know, you need to do a music video. You need to have commercials. You, you know, do you have a Facebook page? Are you sending out um, newsletters? Are you sending out email mailers? Um, there's, you know, um, are you know, are you connecting every day, sending out portfolios to those agents and to those record companies, to those radio stations? And if you're not, then you know you're not going to be seen. Okay, so the way you break into uh, a really great career is being able to do all of this and learning this and so forth. And one thing helps the other. I know like my albums help me and my uh, credentials as a teacher, you know, and that makes sense, you know. And the same with you. If you have a great album selling and you're a great guitarist, then guess what? Everybody's going to want to study with you because they hear you. You see what I'm saying? So that's how this all works together. And, you know, so... Um, like I say, everything is, is just opening up more and more doors. Okay? Good. Let's move on. Okay, thank you so much for staying with me today. And lastly, um, you know, a coach artist developer, the greatest thing they're going to give you is to help you build your confidence your spiritual fortitude to stay with it, trust in your dreams, and to make it. And you know, we all have challenges. We all have times where things just don't seem to be working right. And again, your coach can help you with strategies, uh, for example, dealing with stage fright, uh, feeling confident, building up visioning, all of these aspects uh, to help you truly be the very best that you can be. Um, and if this sounds good to you, again, I would love to help you realize your dreams. This is what why I do this. Um, again, I've been in, in the arts for over 30 years, and it's my passion. But my greatest passion is being able to teach others to reach for their dreams. Um, I am blessed to have had coaches uh, in my life that have helped me, you know, reach my pinnacle of what I wanted to do in life, and I want to give back and do the same. And so, uh, again, if, you if you're interested in artist development and finding more about that, uh, you can visit my website, which is James R. Spencer, S-P-E-N-C-E-R.com. My phone number is 562 
394-2694. That's my artist development firm number. Uh, you can leave a message there and we'll get back with you. Um, basically what you will need uh, to work though with, with uh, me or one of my um, other coaches would be you will uh, to do either an, uh, a video or in-house audition uh, which we can give you uh, the requirements for that as well as we would want to see a portfolio which can include many things depending on where you are in your development, you know, resume, photos, so forth. So we, we just want to get a feel for what you do. Uh, then what we do is we set up um, an orientation where um, after we critique your portfolio, uh, we're going to take uh, you know quite a bit of time to really look at where you are and write down several uh, things that you're needing and then uh, we will uh, you would make an appointment with either myself um, or my other coaches to sit down and uh, go over a game plan and then from that uh, the way it will work is you would enroll in a um, you know, a weekly or bi-monthly uh, or twice a week, just depends on what you're doing, a uh, coaching session. So you pay like a tuition uh, and then you work and then you also then are getting though with that agent services and other things. So it's a really great deal and it's a great way to get that mentoring you need uh, to get you where you want to go. So thanks for visiting me at Spencer Music and Artist Development and uh, hope to work with you. Look forward to hearing from you. Thanks so much. Also feel free to leave any comment questions on the YouTube uh, video comments or you can also send uh, private messages. Uh